Thank you so much for joining us here on Weather Nation for a very special interview. We brought you the historic launch of Inspiration4. We watched as four civilians were the first to orbit the Earth. And it was so exciting that we wanted to continue the conversation with one of those astronauts. And joining us right now is Dr. Cyan Proctor. She was the pilot of this mission. Everybody's been asking me to ask you, what was the most exciting part? Was it the launch? Was it being in space? Or just a little bit of all those emotions coming together for you? It was certainly a little bit of everything, but I got to tell you, nothing beats when we opened our cupola, the giant space window for the first time, and I got to put my head up there and see the entire Earth. That was stunningly beautiful. Dr. Proctor, you have a very unique story, which I think is going to inspire so many people. You actually were selected as one of the finalists in 2009 to become a NASA astronaut. You were not selected in the final event, but here we are more than a decade later and you didn't give up and you are living your dream. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where I feel so lucky and grateful, but it's this idea of not giving up and being resilient. A lot of times we think that our best lives have passed us by by the time we get into our late 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s. And I'm here to tell people that if you keep that lifelong learning and you keep that spark and that desire to go out and explore and to try new things, you never know when these childhood dreams can be attainable at any age. And so uh, just keep working and persevering and moving forward. And you might just be like me, a seasoned individual living their best life. I love that story. And you also were marking history being the first African-American woman to pilot a spacecraft. I know that's got a, a tug on some heartstrings for you too, and also really be exciting to you to know what you are doing for young girls are all over that are just watching you. Yes, you know, the part about being the first black female pilot is so important because representation matters. And one of the things that I like to talk about is how do we create a just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive space or a Jedi space for future generations? And we do that by opening up access, uh, letting people see people like them going out and achieving great things. And so having me as a woman of color being able to inspire girls of color and and knowing that they can go out and get their pilot's license and that they can go and be the pilot of a spacecraft is important. Sounds like that goes into your space to inspire motto that you live and breathe every day, encouraging women and young girls to find that strength within themselves and that the dreams are as big as the galaxy. Oh, Absolutely. You know, uh, when I talk about space to inspire, a lot of people think I'm talking about outer space, but the most important space is this space, the space we inhabit. We take this space everywhere we go and it's unique. It's unique to you. It's unique to me. And what we do with our own space to inspire those within our reach matters. And, and I just want people to understand that, you know, they, they are important. Uh, all of us as individuals are important and we have unique gifts that we, we need to share with the world. Science communication has always been a really, you know, important part of my career as a community college professor at South Mountain Community College. I have spent most of my teaching career teaching non-science majors science, geology, and having them fall in love with our planet. And so learning how to successfully communicate and how to share just all of the benefits that science has to offer us. And so I went to space with that in mind, but I also went as an artist and a poet and being able to paint in space and write poetry about my experience so that we get this kind of well-rounded view of who can go to space. It's not just always the scientists. We need the artists, we need the poets, we need people who can come back and inspire. What is your goal now moving forward? You checked off the mission. I'm sure you would love to go out and do it again, but what do you hope to take from this mission and put into the communities moving forward or to help motivate other people that want to follow in your footsteps? You know, the big takeaways for me are, you know, again, this Jedi space. How do we 
you know, create a just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive space as we move forward with humanity to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And, and I think that Inspiration4 really does a good job of showing how when we solve for space, we solve for Earth and how we can have human space exploration, but take on big endeavors like childhood cancer and being able to raise over 200 million it for this cause. But not only that, to be able to fly people like my crewmate, Haley Arsenault, who is a survivor of childhood cancer and is going to be the youngest female to ever go to space. And, you know, these are things that just inspire people to think, hey, I can do this. This is something that I can be a part of. But even if you're not a space person and you're like, ah, I don't really want to go out to space, the idea of being able to use your space, your unique space that you inhabit to inspire those within your reach and beyond is also just as important. We all need to figure out how we can contribute as humans to the betterment, not only of our species, but also just the environment and our earth. A big thanks again to Dr. Proctor. The Inspiration4 story is historic and will live on for decades to come. And to get more information, you can always head over to our website, weathernationtv.com.